they picked snowflakes to talk about all of their yes. fragile ego. Like, yes. It's so funny to me that they did be like, they're like, this makes me sad. I'm a man and I'm sad. All right. I'll put it on a snowflake. <laughs> I, I see how this metaphor could be confusing. Each of these crying babies is a men's rights activist. Yeah. All right, never, sorry. Each of these piles of shit is a man's rights. Each pile of shit is different. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema or else. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath picked a spectacular week to take off, but <laughs> yeah, sitting 900 <laughs> miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm great, Noah. You know who's to blame for everything? Who's that? Women. Oh, <laughs> women. Noah. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. <laughs> And speaking of women, we're excited to welcome back our guest masochist today. Kara Santa Maria is a science communicator and podcast that you'll know from Talk Nerdy, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, and National Geographic Channel, to name a few. Kara, welcome back. I hate you guys so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Like, I know you've said that before, but I, I, I got to feel you really mean it this time around. <laughs> we owe you a cheese plate or something. That. <laughs> we owe you a Cheesecake Factory franchise at this point. <laughs> Jesus. All right. So spe like, let's let's break the suspense. Tell us, Kara, what will we be breaking down today? Oh, really? It's so much. OK, so this is a movie. <laughs> called The Red Pill, and it's about, it's a documentarian who is a woman, by the way, who wants to learn more about the men's rights activist movement, and as she dives deeper, she starts to, I guess, lose touch with all of reality, <laughs> and eventually doesn't know what's real. Well, I, yep. I love that she uses the whole falling down the rabbit hole analogy early on it's like yeah because this is going to be total fucking jabberwocky before it's over yeah, she's literally like i think i might join this cult now yeah right <laughs> it's a terrifying descent all right so and eli how bad was this movie oh man okay uh well if you hate women almost as much as you hate logical thinking mm. you will love this movie look we've watched a lot of stupid and dangerous documentaries right Aliens are actually demons trying to steal your soul. Yep. We didn't go to the moon. Yep. The earth is flat. 9-11, yep. vaxxed, out of the shadows. But I would argue that this documentary is the one that most often made me ask, what do you want to happen? Right? right? Like, like the moon guy, he wants the Jew lizards to stop controlling the moon base. <laughs> I have no idea what the good version of the world looks like to the people who made this documentary. There, there's one guy who very clearly will not be satisfied until we see more female corpses being pulled out of industrial accidents, right? Yes, very <laughs> important to him. Yeah. Oh, so and we should point out, by the way, th okay, so this is a documentary about a feminist learning about the men's rights movement, the way that Case for Christ was a book about an atheist investigating the history of Christianity, <laughs> you know, for his church. And needless to say, of course, she eventually learns that these misogynistic rape apologists are pretty swell fellas after all, right? <laughs> oh, wow, this is a tough one. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yes. Because you guys made me download this movie from Amazon Prime. I would say this is the best at being the worst at fucking up my Amazon Prime algorithm. <laughs> now I'm just going to get a bunch of ads for boner pills and MAGA hats. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Just imagine what my recommendations on Netflix look like, Kara, okay? <laughs> well, I'm not saying I have no sympathy on this, but come on. <laughs> this is the only movie I've ever seen on Prime that is free if you're willing to watch ads. Yeah. I didn't know that was an option on Prime. And I never got any ads. Really? No, it's me very either. clear. They clicked that box and then <gasps> fucking no. dick pills and my pillow were like, mm, no, for us. no. So <laughs> too much. This is what it is, is because you guys are in places where nobody would fucking advertise on that, right? Like, I got ads all the way through. 
I, I saw something like 16 ads because I'm in South Georgia where people are like, yeah, fuck, we'll advertise on that shit. Yeah, sure, why no not? No way. Yeah. But here in, here in L.A. and there in New York, no way. Yeah, nobody wants mm-hmm. to touch the thing, I guess. Yeah, they're like, they're region specific. Like, yeah, I don't want to be associated with that in Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. That's amazing. I'm going to go with um, best worst. What's that over there? <laughs> right? This whole fucking movie. This movie would be like if you made a movie about Nazis, but you never mentioned the anti-Semitism or the racism <laughs> or anything like that. Thank you. And, and, then, and then you look at a bunch of anti-Nazi protests and you go, oh, those motherfuckers really hate precision marching. What a bunch of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I was going to go with best, best, best. Googling experience, right? <laughs> when, when we go through these documentaries, I give everyone a quick Google. There is not a single human involved in this movie who I will not Google and discover insanity and monstrosity <laughs> right away. Yeah. First page, yes. top line. <laughs> yeah, I was going to call, I might have gone with best worst Eli bios in the notes. Man, there are <laughs> yeah, a lot great. of shit here. All right, well, I'll tell you what, it would be a shame to waste all this white hot rage. So we're going to make some s'mores with my anger, but we'll be back in a minute to break down all the deceptive whiny bullshit that is the red pill. Okay, Noah, you ready for the Adam and Eve ad? What, am I not in this one? Uh, of course not. Kara, you're a you're, you're lady. I, w- I would never ask you to be in an Adam and Eve ad. I mean, jeez. Why not? Women, like, we more often use sex toys. What? No. Y- yes, they, they do. And, and Adam and Eve is a sex positive store where people of whatever gender identity can shop for all sorts of stuff. Uh, <laughs> Noah. Come on. No, they don't. No. Uh, uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And right now, our listeners can get 50% off of almost any one item and free shipping when they enter the code AWFUL at checkout. No. No. Yes, Eli, they do. Again, just go to adamandeve.com and use the offer code AWFUL for 50% off almost any one item and free shipping. Eli. Eli? <sighs> He's hiding under the bed again. Yeah, he does that. It, is he going to come out? Uh, when he gets hungry, yeah. So soon then? Oh, definitely soon, yeah. Hi, I'm Cara Santa Maria. I used to be a science educator and advocate, but then I decided I sure would like a boat. And in order to get that boat, I found myself among the world of wealth rights activists. So, Tad, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Tad Billingsworth Borbottom the 15th, and I'm a wealth rights activist. Mm, All right, Tad. And so what is a wealth rights activist? Well, wealth rights activists simply want equality. You see, the 99%, you hear about them all the time, the 99%, the 99%. But did you know that the wealthy make up 95% of yacht accidents and 98% of private plane crashes? Poor people don't want you to know these things, but they're true. Wow, these are great arguments that I have no counter to. Mm, exactly. And and just how did you become a wealth rights activist? That's a great question. As you know, at a very young age, I was riding my pony across the servants, and one of them said to me, you suck. And from that moment on, I knew I had to fight for the rights of wealthy people everywhere. Mm, compelling stuff and, and very healthy. And, and what do you say to the so-called poor people who accuse you of having said that you want to hunt them for sport? Oh, um, I do want to hunt them for sport, but, uh, they started it. Wow, I never thought of it that way before. You are smart and reasonable. Give me money. What? Uh, I said I agree with you. Oh, nice. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for the breakdown, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. A lot of confidence... To name your production company Gravitas Ventures, I'd say you didn't hit that, uh, <laughs> that goal. But we open up on a on a bunch of like just an internet montage of people agreeing that MRAs are a bunch of misogynistic assholes, right? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And so far, I'm with it. I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah, get it. So woman, woman making this movie, 
all of the producers were women. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. List of female producers. And I was like, hmm, how is this going to play out? Not well. No, <laughs> not well. And, and the, the first thing we see her reading, by the way, is that Paul Elam, a person she will interview later in this movie, wrote an article called, When Is It Okay to Punch Your Wife? Yep. Yes. We yes. will never come back to that, by the way. Right? Like, there's all of these headlines <laughs> at the beginning of all this misogynistic rape apologist bullshit that he has written. We will never come. There's one nope. of them that will be like, well, that was taken out of context. The rest of it is just, well, sometimes you got to punch your wife, I guess. Yeah. She yeah. literally never asks any of them about nope. it. Yeah. Nope. And this is where it's probably good to give a little backstory on this movie. So Cassie J, she will be our protagonist and the documentarian here. She announced that she was going to make a balanced documentary about feminism, which, you know, already kind of gives away the game. We don't need a balanced documentary about civil rights either. Um, <laughs> but then she failed to find funding. Surprise, surprise. So she went to MRAs and more importantly, she was advertised her Kickstarter to make this movie was pushed by Breitbart News. So no. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. So that's who funded this movie. It received a glowing review from none other than Milo Yiannopoulos. No. And so mm hmm. There went the money and there went the opinions. Yeah. Wow. Right. So she starts off on this bizarre opening question, too. This is just nonsense. She says, I, I can't even remember it exactly. She's like, has something ever happened to you? And you're not sure what it is, but you know it's important. I'm like, no. <laughs> what, what that, I don't even understand how that would happen. <laughs> Jesus. All right. So, yeah. So our intrepid documentarian is going to go meet this guy, Paul Elam, who is the founder of the Voice for Men website. Uh, Voice for Men, by the way, also known as virtually every public forum throughout fucking history today. <laughs> Finally, the men can speak. Jesus. <laughs> so she's, she goes to meet him and she's like, all right, I guess I should probably explain this shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and hey, refreshingly honest, she's like, uh, why am I making a movie about vicious sexists? Uh, I'm a failed actress. And I wrote in my notes, good for you, Cassie. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's like at the beginning, she is outward about the fact that these MR, these, well, she does call them notorious men's rights activists instead of like avowed sexist, mm -hmm. you know, brutal misogynist. Mm -hmm. But still, like she shows the headlines, she talks about how horrible it is. And at the beginning, I sort of like her. Like mm -hmm. she shows her filmography and she's mostly made social justice films about, you know, real global issues. So I'm sitting here thinking like, how the fuck is this going to become a pro MRA doc? Like she's Dave Rubin. Yep. Yep. Like something happens. Mm hmm. Yeah, right. So she 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 starts off by telling us how she became a feminist and she talks about like the sexism in Hollywood and everything. And then she adds at the end, then I became a documentarian. And I'm like, I, we, we're watching your documentary. We know <laughs> that much. But then she's like, and I, I was trying to decide what to do my next documentary about. And at that time, two stories about terrible rapes broke in the news. Right. She will not make a documentary about them. No, the, lo <laughs> the end of that sentence is, and I decided to make a documentary about the people apologizing for them. Right, right. and advocating for them. <laughs> yeah, Come like on. any good journalist, she wanted to get the pro-rape side of the story too, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, there was this great moment where she's like, I kept reading their articles and I was like, why do I keep doing this? I'm like, Oh, God, this is how every guest on God Awful Movies feels. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And this is when yep. she introduces that this began my journey down the rabbit hole, which, again, as Noah pointed out already, is such a wonderful metaphor because, of course, nothing Alice had happened to her down the rabbit hole was real. It was the imagination <laughs> of a child. <laughs> <laughs> this is when I began to be the shining. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> so. And the thing is, I feel like if I had done my research, like you guys obviously have, <laughs> I would have known that from the get go, like the fact that she's being funded by MRA groups and that she's being like promoted on Breitbart would have given me a clue because even though at the very beginning she shows again, the when is it okay to punch your wife headline? Mm -hmm. She goes, 
what I perceived to be women haters. It's like from the beginning, yep. she's already tempering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so we cut from there. We, we, we open up on this, um, you know, rally for penises in Toronto. And it's so <laughs> fucking sad because, first of all, there are as many speakers as there are attendees, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, it's yes. the there are dozens of us photo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And all of them have these sad ass little hand drawn signs that they obviously like didn't know they were going to need until that morning or something. There's, they're all and and they're like doing their sad little thing. And then the protesters show up to remind them what a crowd sounds like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's the best. It's just three guys being like, and another thing. And then a massive crowd being like, fuck your face. Fuck your face. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great, too, because she so, she shows these counter protesters and they're all like super articulate and they're yes. making really good points. And I'm like, uh-huh. Agree. Uh-huh. And then and then it cuts to Paul Elam coming up like mm. they're all in a line. And this guy's like, thanks for coming here to advocate for the rights of. And he like just doesn't finish his sentence. And then the protesters come and they say all sorts of really smart things and then it cuts back to these men's rights activists. They're like, now it's time for Paul Elam to have some words. And he like barrels out and he's like twice the height yeah. of the rest of the guys. And I'm like, wow, I'm legit afraid of this man. He's yeah. scary. His eyeballs are legit afraid of him. They're trying yeah. to get out. <laughs> they are. They are trying to escape. And we should probably... Do a little background on Paul Elam here. So this movie has already admitted that he declared Bash a Violent Bitch Month. Uh, so that's pretty much all you need to know. Right. But for the record, Paul Elam is a deadbeat dad who makes a living talking about how unfair the court system is to men who want to take care of their children while having abandoned his biological children not once, but twice. <laughs> he, he advocates about how unfair child support is and how unfair false rape accusations are, but he accused his first wife of lying about being raped so that he could relinquish his parental rights and avoid paying child support. Oh my God. And as Elam will proudly tell anyone who listens, he became a men's rights activist when he was 13 and his mom made him take medicine. <laughs> uh, you would hard, you'd be hard pressed to find a worse human being on earth. And in case anyone listening to this has any doubts about this person, he wrote on a voice for men in 2010, real quote, should I ever be called to sit on a jury for a rape trial? I vow publicly to vote not guilty even in the face of overwhelming evidence that the charges are true. End real quote. Oh my God. Jesus fucking Christ. He also looks like his eyebrows are ashamed for him and they're trying to cover his face. <laughs> so, <laughs> or trying to keep those eyeballs in. Yeah, it's one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so, so we're caught between his speech and her interviewing him at a very nice holiday in Express. <laughs> and, and he's like, you know, they call us misogynists and racists and bigots because women don't want men to talk about their issues. I'm like, weird how I never get called a misogynist, racist or bigot for talking about my issues. She said, so weird that that happens to you so much, even though we're both men. Right. Yeah. Anyway. But of course, we go back to the speech and there are other lovely speakers. Eli, you've got some notes on Dean Esme. Uh, yes, Dean Esme, or as you probably know him, guy who spends the entire movie talking with his eyes closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is the former editor of A Voice for Men and the current editor of, and this is a real website, which everyone must see, Red Pill Religion. Nice. Which is part of the Escaping Atheism Project. Oh, my Wait, God. Wait, what? <laughs> escaping Atheism? Yeah. You know how you have to, like, escape atheism? What? You got to, like, find new connections in your life and maybe get a new job. <laughs> Parents kick you out of the house when they find out you're not an atheist. <laughs> literally, literally what this guy is the head of. <laughs> He's also an HIV denier, an anti-Semite. Oh. A global warming denier, an evolution denier, and my favorite, he has written extensively about the fact that he does not believe in peer review. Wait, what? He, call, <laughs> how can, he calls peer review cronyism because you have to let other people check your work. <laughs> uh, he also looks like a bowl of racist gravy. Yes, he so, does look like yeah. a bowl of racist <laughs> gravy. Wow. He may have been my least favorite of the talking heads. One more, though, I'm going to throw your way. There was a, a dude by the name of Joe Mante as well. Oh, uh, Joe Mante. So Joe Mante, again, my best <laughs> worst. 
his Google results are this movie and him complaining that there are too many women on the city council of his hometown. Yes. <laughs> so he wants to start a men's council for his hometown and wherever the fuck. <laughs> He looks he looks like if Joe Paterno were a haunted mountain that doesn't speak to its kids. <laughs> so, all right. So, OK. And then we get this weird ass moment where Paul Elam seems to be dodging the question. What is the men's rights movement? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's not ready to give answers to that like, hard hitting question yet. <laughs> well, he goes, he's, a, he's like, you know, it's really hard and complicated and difficult to explain. I'm like, oh, God, they never should have sent a woman. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, so he starts he starts giving us a few of the various issues that, that are you know men's rights issues such as men are disproportionately represented in suicides, homelessness, workplace fatalities, etc. Right? Right. And the point here being that horrible things can, of course, happen to men. And those things would happen to any gender if there were equity in our society. Yep. Right. So, yep. like, like, men die more in industrial accidents because men work more in these settings because women were kept out of the workforce for so long. But somehow, that means that men are victims of what? Like, I don't know, earth, earthness? Yeah, right. well, exactly. Like, victims That's just of, the like, thing. nature? Yeah, because they're not then fighting against, you know, they're not fighting for better workplace standards in those, in those industries or anything, right? No, exactly. And then, of course, he just leaves out the, like, more than 600 women and non-conforming or non-binary people who are raped by men every day in Jesus America. Christ. Daily. Yes. Jesus, that's just America. Right, just in America. Wow. One in five women have been raped in their lifetimes. Compare that <clears throat> to one in 71 men, but they love the men get raped too talking point. Which, yep. don't get me wrong, is fucking horrible. But the numbers don't really comport. And, no. and okay, what... What about the 25% of U.S. women who have reported sexual or physical violence by their male partners or, or the 5,000 honor killings of women worldwide every year, 20,000 plus dowry-related murders of women in India alone every year? Oh, but yeah, more dudes are killed each year. Of course, Paul, by other dudes. <laughs> That's the fucking difference. And it's not like feminists are out there saying we need to like divvy up the honor killings evenly, right? Yeah, like, I know. right. We don't want to dole out more murder. You, yeah, you can just get rid of all the fucking honor killings if you deal with the sexism. It's so fucking stupid. And plus, he can't even get 18 seconds into listing this shit before he goes into abject sexism and starts talking about how men don't even get to decide if women have babies. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> is fucking crazy, right? <laughs> He's like, well, her body, her choice, but what about men's choice? And I wrote, hey, good news. No men in the history of the world have <laughs> ever been forced to give birth to a baby. Yes, Not one. Right. We're back right. a thousand. <laughs> There's no baby in your body. Oh my right? God. And let's be clear what the like end of that argument is, right? Because she's going to spend a lot of time talking about like fatherhood rights and fatherhood choices, right? The other side of that argument is forced adoptions or forced abortions, right? Yeah. Right. The way that men get to choose their their parental things is they're like, ah, sorry, I flipped a coin and I don't not want this one. Here, I'll do you with the Hoover. Lay down, lay down. Just, God. It's, yeah, right, right. So, and and also, by the way, like, even this like desperate attempt to try to come up with a couple of real legitimate issues that they could be pissed off about. It's it falls so fucking short and they have to lie to get there. Right. One guy says at one point that, quote, almost all of the people on the autism spectrum are men. That's insanely inaccurate. Yes, more men are autistic than women, but that is insanely inaccurate. It's like a, right. it's like 20 percent are women or something. That's not almost all. What the <laughs> fuck are you yeah. even talking about? Yeah. And he refers to them as victims of autism disorders. Right. Like, right. <laughs> what? Like as if there's like a, a perpetrator there. <laughs> and, and, and apparently he's saying that feminism creates autism. Yeah. It, unclear. Uh. Unclear. One out of 12 men are the victims of the glasses they wear. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, but, his, but his best argument, Elam's best argument to me is where he goes like, hey, look, if men have all the power, then why am I unable to say the thing that I'm saying right now on Amazon Prime as well as unencumbered in my website and as we saw earlier in public spaces? <laughs> why don't you listen to me? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. One of my notes here is like, they call us whiners, he whines. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do. We do. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, Okay, and so then Cassie gives the fuck up on being a documentarian and just starts being a YouTuber, right? She just starts like, <laughs> several times in this movie, she'll just like talk to us directly to the camera. And I'm like, this doesn't even count. <laughs> Put some B-roll <laughs> under it at least. Come on. <laughs> it's so weird. It's just, and her whole like, what would you call it? Like confession booth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reality TV Real moment. world challenge. Right. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And they're starting to talk about how like cab drivers work too many hours and garbage collectors hate their jobs as if no woman in the history of being a woman has ever been a cab driver or a garbage collector. Like we're just not allowed to be them, I guess. I just... The cab driver was such a weird one for me. Is that a... I mean, I'm sure it's predominantly male occupant, like 66% of the workforce or whatever is male, but like, is that a, like a overwhelmingly male occupation? I don't know. But even the way they say it, it's it's like almost like there's no such thing as a woman cab driver. Yeah. And the other thing that really pisses me off basically about this whole movie is that the entire premise is that like men and boys have problems and those problems aren't being paid attention to, which is insane because the male perspective is the normative perspective yeah. in Western society, at least in basically all of global society. And even beyond that, there is, for example, an American Psychological Association division that's dedicated to the mental health of men and boys. It's called Division 51, the Society for the Psychological Study of Men and Masculinities. There is a way to care about this shit without being a misogynistic, violent fucknut. But yet they don't want to do that. They just want to bitch and moan and equate men's violence or violence against men with violence against women, which is disingenuous and actually really insulting to little boys who are victims of, you know, sexual and physical abuse. Like they use that as an entry point for all of their nonsense. And it's fucking insulting. It actually really pisses yeah. me off that they're like, boys are raped. So because of that, I should be able to advocate for rape against women. Like, what? Yeah. Like, of course, boys are raped and it's fucking horrible. And you're part of the problem. Yeah, absolutely. And perhaps the most toxic thing about the toxic waste pit that is this ideology is their victimization of male victims, right? Of them swooping right. in to take the healing experience that male victims should go through and instead blaming it on their political agenda. Right. Which is what this is. Right. So that's the most important point here. You know, Carrie, you were saying like that, that there's a way of, of dealing with these issues that that it doesn't involve being a misogynistic asshole. That's also the way that deals with the issue. Right. That's also the way that actually might do something about it. Fundamentally, like if you want a palate cleanser after watching this movie, which you'll desperately need, I highly recommend that you go out and you watch The Mask You Live In, which is a documentary that was made by Jennifer Siebel Newsom. It was her second documentary after she made Misrepresentation. So The Mask You Live In is all about the negative consequences of how we as a society raise boys to not be comfortable expressing their emotions. And we raise them to feel more self-efficacious when they fight than when they talk about being hurt. Yeah. And that leads to a lot of really horrible negative consequences. But in in no time does she blame feminists for this. <laughs> yeah, weird. <laughs> weird how she doesn't get around to that because uh, this movie is going to go with women and children first on lifeboats is sexism. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll oh, get God. there. But before we get there, we got to talk about Warren Farrell, the author of The <laughs> Myth of Male Power. Right. Oh, Warren. He, I guess, wrote a book about how losers should get laid more too and uh, uses, the again, this this stupid fucking argument that more men are dying in jobs that women are largely kept out of because of sexism, mm -hmm. including at this point, my God, war deaths. 
Yep. Right. Oh, I love the war death part. Because <laughs> women arrange all the wars? Uh, it's the craziest thing. So so they show this like graphic that shows the number of women who have died in combat in the past several wars, right? And it's obviously mostly men. It's like 98 to 99% men. But as they're showing this graphic, the number of women gets higher. And somehow they use this as an argument that like women are less victimized in society because they die less often in war. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? We weren't allowed to be in combat. Yes! <laughs> like, right. That's why we're not dying in combat. And now you're seeing more women dying in combat because we're now allowed to be <laughs> in combat. It's so fucking confusing. And like he, he talks about it as if we are the ones waging war. Like I thought men were the ones waging war. <laughs> well, and the most bizarre thing about this is that the reason women can fight in combat now is because feminists fought for that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and by their own argument, right, because we see the number of women going up, we care about men more now that women are dying <laughs> in Desert Storm. <laughs> like, like some soldier sees his female comrade jump on a grenade and he's like, good. Good equality. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear? Ashley took an IED. Yeah, it's a great day for men. <laughs> oh, God almighty. And then, yes, and then the motherfucker actually starts taking issues with women and children first. <laughs> oh, right. He says it's because he says women and children first are allowed off of like cruise ships and shit. Oh, he talks about Sully, right? And yeah. Like the, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they show they show like the one news clip they could find in modern society. Society where they say the words women and children first. And then he's like, yeah, because men are expendable, right? No, it's not because men are expendable, you piece of shit. It's children first because they have their lives ahead of them. And I don't know, historically, who the fuck is actually going to take care of the kids and not just like swim away from them? <laughs> Maybe the women, you know, the ones who are like still breastfeeding them. Yeah. I hate you. I hate this movie. <laughs> I hate you guys for making me watch it. Yeah. He, also uses, he literally uses the term Glass cellar. Yes. Glass cellar. Yes. Says, Let's stop talking about the glass ceiling and What's, talk about the glass. Which is so wonderful because he doesn't get the metaphor. So in his metaphor, he's standing <laughs> on a glass floor with ultimate opportunity above him. And he's like, yeah, but I could fall through onto all those women at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, ugh, God, there's a lot of period blood down there. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta see them all. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, we get a bunch of that shit, and then we get, um, we do more of this uber lazy direct address bullshit where she's like, you know, I, I'm not sure if men are oppressed, but, but maybe that's just a flaw in my little lady brain, and I just don't <laughs> get it, you know. And she comes back to this argument quite often, right? Where she's like, you know, when they talk about their issues, I feel like speaking up on behalf of women. I wonder if this is how men feel when women talk about feminist issues. And I'm like, well, if you mean defensive, then yes, right? But if you mean <laughs> justifiably denying the premise, then no, right? There is a difference when, like, you know, there is a difference between how I bristle when I hear the truth versus how you bristle when you hear a fucking lie. Right, right. And the, the problem is she literally, hook, line, and sinker, starts to empathize with this argument, which is, exactly equivalent to a white nationalist argument that because I grew up poor, I don't have any privilege. Yep. No, you do have privilege. Just because you were poor and your life sucks doesn't mean black people didn't have it that much worse just by virtue of the color of their skin. And that's the exact same argument that she just doesn't see. She keeps making this weird false equivalency. It's like she's being fully baited into feeling sorry for men and their fragile egos because a tiny percentage of aggressively violent ones get their feelings hurt when they read Gloria Steinem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And she just go and she does that over and over again throughout the film. Yeah. This is where we should address, right? Because a lot of people are confused about what the term privilege means, right? Privilege does not mean nothing bad ever happens to you, right? Right. Privilege is how the world treats you as the center of a focus, right? And if you really want to learn that, you can read stuff like Unpacking the Backpack of Privilege, which is a one-page document for you to understand what kind of things <laughs> are privilege. But, you know, we can't ask Cassie to be making her way through a whole fucking page. So uh, <laughs> now we're going to watch some protesters yell. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we cut to a protest of people protesting the, the talk by War Warren Farrell. Right. The, the guy yeah. that we just talked about. Because 
he's fucking scum. Yeah, right. he is fucking scum. By the way, this is a guy in his book, which Noah mentioned earlier, wrote, he's talking about a, a guy, whether or not he's going to fuck a girl, even though she said no. Quote, oh God, does Susan's no, followed by her continuing to tongue kiss with me and caress my body with her breasts, actually mean a no or a yes? He mused. Like well, he mused, it, he mused about whether or not he wants to rape her. Right, and this movie is confused about whether or not this guy is scum, right? Or yeah, or whether or not people should be more polite when their university hosts a talk by this dude. Right. So in this scene, there's this girl, right? This like this girl who's really angry and she's yelling at a guy who's attending this protest and she keeps calling him fucking scum, fucking scum. You're fucking scum for supporting this, for coming here. And the guy's like, no, I just want to hear, you know, varying opinions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, a paid ticket, by the way. I want to pay for a ticket. Yeah, I'm going to pay yeah. for this. Mm -hmm. And it's so clear that in this documentary, they're trying to paint this girl as being like, quote, just as bad as the other side because she's using bad language. But this reminds me so much of this quote that's been like going around the internet, like a meme that I saw that I think is so compelling and important that I'm going to read it if you guys are okay with Do it. Because I think yeah. everybody needs to remember this. Quote, when you debate a person about something that affects them more than it affects you, remember that it will take a much greater emotional toll on them than on you. For you, it may feel like an academic exercise. For them, it feels like revealing their pain only to have you dismiss their experience and sometimes their humanity. The fact that you might remain more calm under these circumstances is a consequence of your privilege, not increased objectivity on your part. I think every skeptic listening to this show needs to remember this. It's like, yeah, dude, maybe you're just here to listen to, quote, differing opinions, but maybe she's been a victim of violent rape and yeah. your opinions advocate for that. So, yeah, you're fucking scum. Yeah. Right. No, you yeah. just paid a guy to advocate for that. It doesn't matter why. And she seems pretty fucking hurt for probably good reason. Yeah, you, you paid a guy who is about to make the argument that while women fear date rape, men fear date robbery, i.e., being expected to pay for dinner on dates. Oh, Jesus Wait, what? fucking yes, Christ. Yes, that's in the book. He's got a oh whole chapter God. about the the dangers of date robbery. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, and in support of him, they just found the fuck youest person they could and followed her around for the evening. Jesus. That, and that's not the last time they'll use that defense, by the way. So now it's time for Cassie to meet Warren Farrell one on one. So we shaky cam our way up to his house. Right. Like, who the fuck is her camera operator? <laughs> right? This is so awful. His first words, which he, when he opens the door, he goes, Oh, I assumed you were a man <laughs> because I'm a fucking sexist. <laughs> no, but he doesn't even say that. He says, I assumed you were a male, but you're a oh, female. Yes, I can't. I hate it when people use male and female as nouns. I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm a female person, but I'm a woman. Oh, Our, it fucking pisses me off. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. A vulva. Yes. <laughs> Please come in. <laughs> Would you like a single biscotti on a small tea plate? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so so we meet uh this the asshole warren farrell he see he used to fight for lady rights but then ladies got into the lead so he switched to men apparently right. that's his argument <laughs> he literally says the words like i used to make a lot of money talking about feminist yeah. issues it's like, oh, yeah, I used to scam women out of money at conventions, but then they caught on. So I figured I'd do men instead. <laughs> well, I love this bullshit implication that the real money was in feminism. He took a pay cut to go to men's rights. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, man. I'm sorry. I make a living on Patreon. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, also, we, oh, we, we I, I have to point this out. We also learn that he went to NYU. Damn it. God damn it. <laughs> this guy, Jonathan Haidt, it's been a tough couple of years for, our, yeah. for the violence. Yeah. Go fighting violence. Go fighting violence. <laughs> the good news is it's not like he gave him all that much money. Um, all right. <laughs> but yeah, but so he's complaining about how bad it is to be a man because men are supposed to work, right? And he's like, I don't want to have a job. And I'm like, wow, like, all the people I know advocating for the right of a man to stay at home and be a stay at home husband are fucking feminists. Yeah, all of them. exactly. <laughs> if that's what you want, yo, like find a really progressive woman. Yeah. But instead, he bitches and moans about how apparently women who marry men that make decent money are prostitutes, which is 
so insulting. He's basically creating a catch-22 where where women can't win. Mm-hmm. Like he's saying, if a woman marries a guy who like makes a good living, that she's only doing it because she's a prostitute. But if a woman marries a guy who doesn't have a job, somehow, I don't know, that is like insulting to his masculinity like right it, there's there's no way out of this fucking bullshit argument nope well right so the the problem that they're having here is like like they don't want to talk about the actual controversial stuff that men's rights are for or against so the only stuff they're talking about is the shit that the that feminists actually would agree with that bond right right, right. <laughs> and at a certain point cassie actually stops him and makes him like back away from that she's like okay why don't you stop filibustering and say anything at all that feminists would disagree with? And he says, I disagree that like men made all the rules and that society is designed to favor men. Right. So as soon as he's asked, he's called upon to say something that feminists would disagree with. He has to say something that's verifiably bullshit. I know. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, that's what we're going to talk about now is like whether or not we live in a patriarchy, which is so obviously true. It's impossible to imagine a patriarchy that doesn't resemble our world at some point, right? You can't yeah. make up an imaginary fantasy patriarchy that doesn't describe our planet at some point in history, right? Oh, yeah. It's it's the craziest thing you've ever heard. That the, It's like every man in this documentary, and apparently Cassie too, all their history books started in 1940. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, like nothing existed before 1940 well and, and so it, in another one of these points where you're like what point are you trying whose side are you on documentary it points out it shows like the map of all the nations that haven't had a female leader and it's so fucking <laughs> yeah. sad there's yeah uh, it, it points out that less than 20 percent of congress is female fewer than five percent of fortune 500 ceos are female and i'm like okay are we done does the movie end here now yeah she makes all of our points but also it pisses me off because all of her MoGraphs and her voice says exactly what you, you, you I heard the correction in your voice. She keeps saying less than 20% yeah, of women. Right, less right. Than, and I'm like, it's fucking fewer. It makes me <laughs> insane when there's an entire team of people involved in making a film and like none of them catch grammar errors. Right. Mm. Like I can't even read the quote without accidentally fixing it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm watching this film and every time she opens her mouth, I'm like, Okay, you just made my point. Yeah. Right. Okay, you just made my point. I don't understand how this is supposed to convince me that, like, we don't live in a patriarchy. Oh, oh well, let me mansplain it to you. Yeah. Here. <laughs> okay, saying. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, because, like, she, she points out that fewer than 20% of Congress is female. The counter argument to that, I shit you not, that this movie offers is, I bet ladies don't even want those super hard man jobs like politician. <laughs> right. They actually said the patriarchy is the result of gender roles and not vice versa. <laughs> what? Just, what? I think I'll have <laughs> babies. I'm sorry. Did you say I don't have to wear shoes and I get to be pregnant? <laughs> Sounds fucking awesome. And by the way, if that insane vision of the world were true, childless women would be CEOs and world leaders, yeah. right? Uh, you would think. And also it's like they love to talk about history and how gender roles are like ensconced in history because that's just nature, which we know is a fallacy, first yep. of all. And also it's just not true. There is a ton of evidence that hunter-gatherer men were not solely responsible for securing food, that there that women were hunting, that women were foraging, that women were cooking, that women were producing the pottery required to cook. It, it's literally like these people refuse to read history. It just, like, women are only baby makers. Men do fucking everything else. And I know that because I was born in 1945. <laughs> yeah. And it, to show how low the arguments get, they will conclude this section with the actual argument of... It's really hard to be a politician. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Think about how like, many hours they have to work. <laughs> Everything you give up in your life as if women have not been attempting, like bending over backward to try and get those roles for like all of human history. I mean, these people are so interested in rewriting history that they're probably thrilled about Trump's new patriotic re-education <laughs> policy. Oh, I oh, bet. God. And I mean, 
Kara, I'm sure you can testify as a woman on the internet that you, your re- privacy is nothing but respected. Oh, yeah. That people tri- really, it's not like male politicians. They're really put through the ringer. I'll tell you what. <laughs> every time I've gone out to get a job, every time I've gone out to, you know, attempt to do something that, you know, will bring me sort of like power and will put me in a position where I have decision-making capabilities, I walked into the room and said, this is what I want to do. And every man in that room said, Kara, I've never seen a woman want something like this before. (laughs) You should have this. I didn't know women wanted to do this. This argument, this movie is so fucking stupid. At one point, I'm pretty sure someone argues that more men die than women. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, you're not even rewriting history. You're rewriting math at this point, guys. (laughs) Jesus Christ. You have to tell us if you're immortal, Kara. (laughs) (laughs) You will never know. (laughs) All right. Well, there's still plenty more of this shit left, but I have to check with my wife and see if it's okay for me to keep recording. So we'll take a quick break. But assuming Lucinda says it's all right, we'll be back soon with even more The Red Pill. Hey, Kara, what have you been listening to in quarantine? Oh, I found this really good podcast called God Awful Movies. Oh, thanks for that. Yeah, of course. What have you been listening to in quarantine, Noah? Uh, Well, actually, I've been catching up on some great classic sci-fi And I've been listening to the Adventure Zone Balance over and over again on loop. Over and over again? On loop, yes. And you know the best way to listen? Using a pair of premium wireless earbuds, especially if you can get them at less than half the price of the other guys. That's why I recommend wireless earbuds from Raycon. I mean, maybe listen to some music. (laughs) No, Kara, no. Just the Adventure Zone Balance all the time, every day, all day. Raycon's newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are the best ones yet. Six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, a more compact design, a noise-isolating fit, plus Raycon earbuds are stylish and discreet. No dangling wires or stems. So I can be listening to Adventure Zone Balance while I work out, while I'm walking, even when I'm recording a podcast. Eli, do you listen to the Adventure Zone Balance while we're recording? You said it, Noah. Give them a try. Raycon has a 45-day free return policy, so you can make sure they're the pair of wireless earbuds for you. For a limited time, get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash gam. That's buyraycon.com slash gam for a special 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. Make sure to check it out now while the deal's running. Buyraycon.com slash gam. Raycon, because if you stop listening to The Adventure Zone, the thoughts will come back. You guys do weird ads. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Spell slots. Hi, I'm Chet Chetley, star of America's most popular game show. This week, we're going to be talking to men's rights activists because there is no floor we won't mop. So with that said, everybody get ready to... Make it black! All right, joining us tonight is Paul Elam... Uh, it's actually Elam. Hey, well, nobody gives a fuck. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself there, Paul? Uh, well, I'm a crusader for men's rights. I care about fatherhood, uh, unless it's my own kids. Oops, you know, oops. And equality for men and women. I also hate domestic violence and really care about sexual assault, which is why I constantly tell men to do those things to women. Fantastic. All right. Well, next up, we have self-titled Honey Badger, Bronk Gagglesmith. Bronk, tell us a little bit about yourself. That's right, Chet. Well, I'm either mentally ill or taking my kink way too far. And um, yeah, that's me. Fantastic. Now, Paul, you argue that men's rights activism is a necessary balance to feminism. I sure have. I sure have. All right. So are you ready to make it black? Uh, Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, We need white rights activism as a necessary balance to civil rights. There you go. And what have you learned? Uh, absolutely nothing. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. We were looking for if your group has all the power to begin with, you don't need a balance to achieve equality. I don't get it. We knew you wouldn't. Brunk, would you like to steal? I sure would, Chet. All right. Give us one of your signature. We need to value men's speeches, but this time make it black. 
Oh, okay. Um, um, well, um, black people. Good, good. Um, they blame all their problems on white people. Excellent. So far. Okay, but we need to value white men because they're just fitting into their natural racial roles. Fantastic. That's it. And what have you learned? Um, everyone at every level of study is wrong, but me. Oh, I'm sorry. We were looking for the argument from naturalism appears monstrous just a few years after it's out of vogue. I don't get it. All right. Well, luckily for you, neither do literally hundreds of angry young men on the Internet whose money will keep you firmly ensconced in the business of hate. And that's going to do it tonight for me. is And we're back for more of this shit. And I guess we're finally going to dig into why the fuck this is called the red pill. Right. <laughs> right it's the right. best. We see Paul Elam and he's like, the red pill? Oh, uh, we stole it from trans women who were using it as a metaphor for their identity. But now it means turning into a Nazi. So that's fun, <laughs> right? Yeah, I still don't even get this. Like, first of all, I don't get it. And what I really don't get is that this whole time, the filmmaker is sitting there with her knees all curled up. Like, she's sitting on the sofa, like, too comfortably with Paul Elam. <laughs> like, she's telling her a bedtime story. Yeah. Right. Like, he's just going on and saying all sorts of heinous, misogynistic shit. And she's, like, smiling and giggling through the whole interview. It's so gross. It's so weird. Yeah. But now, I love this because she asks, asks about the red pill and algae. And what he has to explain here, and this is really common amongst conspiracy theorists, right? If you want to tell yourself a lie that is obviously in, incorrect and most of the world is happy to tell you is incorrect, it helps if you pretend it's a secret that other people just can't handle, right? <laughs> right, yeah. And that's why the Matrix analogy works so well for him. So, But she fucks him up because she's like, okay, so what would be the blue pill? What would be taking the blue pill in this scenario? And he's like, Caring about violence against women. Uh, <laughs> oh, this rape is bad. Yeah, that's oh, Jesus. Yeah, can you guys? I'm still confused. So, wait, what is the red pill again? <laughs> the red pill is realizing that we don't need to stop violence against women. We need to stop violence. It's it's fucking MRA for all lives matter. Apparently. Oh yeah, yeah, I got that a lot. I made that note a lot. Like this is the all <laughs> lives matter bullshit over and over. Actually, it's worse because it's blue lives matter. Yeah, right. Yeah, That's exactly. really what they're doing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we go back to her video diary Blair Witch bullshit, and she starts wondering <laughs> if maybe she should be barefoot and pregnant, right? <laughs> and then she's like, she's like, I thought it might be hard to be a woman, but then. They said no. So like, <laughs> maybe no? <laughs> yeah, it's like she keeps going. She keeps waffling. She's like, my own experience felt valid. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> these men convinced me otherwise. And now I'm wondering, she literally says this quote, you guys. Wait, I think maybe men are just being used to progress societies. <laughs> what? They are the victims of having all the power and privilege in society. Oh my God. Abused by who? Like, what the right. fuck yes. does that even mean? Atlas shrugged, you guys. He shrugged because it uh, was so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's starting to realize it actually is easier being a woman it's so fucking painful. And she's and the reason her reasoning here is she's like, because men are always pressured to do dangerous stuff like join the military and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? Like in my entire goddamn life, I am 44 years old. The only times I have ever felt any pressure to do dangerous shit was instigated by toxic fucking masculinity. Yeah, right? it's like you, you feel pressure to do stupid shit by other men. Right. Yeah. By exactly <laughs> like the shit that feminists are fighting against. That's yeah. the important point. She also at some point literally makes the argument that like, okay, well, maybe in the past, you know, like all of human history when women were subjugated <laughs> and raped and murdered and property, you know, blah, blah, blah. But now, I mean, I don't know. I think maybe the tables have turned and I have it better. Yeah. What are the chances that Cassie lives in the only period of history <laughs> where women have superiority? That's fucking crazy. Oh, she Jesus. says, she says, I, sometimes I just think they're duping me. Like, yeah, they're duping you, yeah. Cassie. God, they you're stupid. You. You're stupid. Yep. You mispronounced uh. paying, but yeah, duping you. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Oh, so well, but so now she decides to like it's it's been forty five minutes after all. It's time to hear from the other side. 
So she's going to give feminism a chance to have their say. She, she gets on the phone. She's like, hello, feminism. <laughs> and so we, we talk to a few feminists and it's amazing how easily they knock down every stupid fucking point this movie has made in like 18 seconds. Right. right. They oh. make all of these brilliant and like really sophisticated arguments. And she's you compare. I want to do like a side by side comparison of her face when she's talking to Paul Elam and her <laughs> face when she's talking to these legitimate professors right. who are knocking down his arguments because she looks at them like like they're evil. Yeah. She's looking at them like she's confused. She's like got this like like angry look on her face. But when she looks at Paul Elam, it's like she's sitting with Jesus. Yeah. yeah. It's the weirdest thing. She's talking to the editor of Miss Magazine who says, yeah, well, the MRA thing, it's just a, it's a sexist backlash to women approaching equality. And I'm like, ding, 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 ding. And she just looks at her like, you say this, define this. What is, what is that? <laughs> what does that even mean? And then there, there's another guy, uh, uh, the author of a book called Angry White Men that she talks to. And he points out that this is like, you know, this is like the people who say that reverse racism is even worse now. And, 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 and he's exactly fucking right. Right. So then I'm watching it and I'm like, wait, I forgot. Is this a pro MRA doc or is it anti? Because <laughs> I'm like feeling much more feminist after I watch this segment. And then, oh, yeah, she brings me back to life and goes and like talks to the incels again. Uh, and you could tell she wanted so bad to give them the villain cut. But all of their answers are one sentences. So her <laughs> yeah. brow is just <laughs> the road as she's like, how do I cut that single sentence that destroys everything I just asked? Hey, will you say not a bunch of times for me? I'm just going to slice this down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, you know, look, I'd love to give a lot of credit to the editor of Miss Magazine and the author of Angry White Men. But like the guy's point, the closing point before the villain cut is basically just look at any single thing anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Just look at all of reality forever. Right. Always. By the way, to which Cassie's response is no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. And then she cuts back to the fucking incels again. And at one point, I can't remember if it's Paul Elam or some other moron, but he literally compares the wage gap to women having a longer life expectancy. So I need to break <laughs> this down really quickly. What? Women don't make men have a shorter life expectancy. Right, yes, exactly. <laughs> like, it's not women doing that to men. Like, she literally thinks, the argument of this whole movie is that all women are evil succubi who want to make children to trap men into giving them all their money. Yep. Yeah, we're really going to double down on that at this point in the film, right? This is where we start introducing, like, first of all, credit to the movie, at least it admits the fucking wage gap exists. I was impressed by that at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, she even gave, like, like legit statistics. Yeah, right, right. I, I, it, and, it, and they show up while this guy's making this argument where he's saying, like, well, you know, you can't quantify sexism and therefore, men and women are technically tied. Wait, no, yeah. no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, there's no way to quantify all the numbers that I just said. I'm like, I feel like there is. <laughs> I feel like there is. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God, Eli, I love what you wrote. Women make less money, but they live longer. So squares. <laughs> squares is a thing. It's a thing. It's fair. Yeah. It's even. <laughs> but let me guess. Let me guess, right after he makes this like horrible argument that like all women are just like trying to trap men and like steal all their money in the form of child support and alimony, she's probably not going to go talk to, I don't know, one of the millions of single women who receive zero support to help raise their no. children. No, we don't, Weird. Need to, we don't need to go there. Weird since they're just statistically overwhelmed the group of people you're talking about. It's so strange <laughs> that you wouldn't <laughs> even think. <laughs> she's like, she's a true journalist with integrity. <laughs> but don't worry. If you're looking for a sad story, how about the tragic tale of the time I gave up my kid because the judge told me to stop giving him an eating disorder? <laughs> All right. Yeah. This came so close to being my best worst, right? This fucking asshole right here is trying. So we're really going to dive in and we're going to spend most of the rest of the movie talking about the problem of men not having custody of their kids, that, 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 that family courts favor 
women when it comes to custodial parenting, which they do, and they do very often because of sexism, right? Right. They do, and there are legitimate arguments against and for it, but they blow it way out of proportion. Right. Well, yeah, they don't they don't bother with any of those legitimate arguments, right? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Instead, we talk to this guy who is just like basically just says, Oh, am I entirely biased in this subject? Yes, let me explain why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he starts telling us the story of his ex-wife tricking him into having sex with her so that she could have a baby for the sole purpose of lording it over him. Great trick. Great trick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he starts telling this story, trying to drum up sympathy with us, the audience, about how he fat shamed his child to the point where a judge had to intervene and tell him to stop it. It, this is his side of the story. That's what right. blew my fucking mind. Yeah. He gets to tell the entirety of this story. And and this is how bad he comes across. <laughs> he's a right. demon by the end of it. He's like, he's first of all, the opening argument here is that my wife was trying to make my son fat because she's fat. And she figured he'd love her, her more if he was fat got a real family tradition of fat they celebrate fatsmas together every year <laughs> oh, what, are you what the about? fuck is that yeah right but then he said you know i got a scale and every day i would make when he when he stayed with me every day i'd make him weigh my weigh himself and then i showed the courts that he got fatter when he was with her and thinner when he was with me and the judge said to him dude stop doing that don't do right. that he literally is like you know he spends a week with me and he loses five pounds in a week it's like that's not good no, no. wait no. you're not supposed that's not healthy no mm -hmm. oh, right. God. and by the way as a result th this is what happened according to his own fucking story <laughs> the judge was like he was like judge look my wife is making it fat i weigh my son every single time i see him and the judge was like oh don't do that and he was like I relinquish custody of my son, <laughs> which is fucking if they cut off one of my fingers every time I visited my son, I would see my son 10 times and then ask if they took toes. There's, yeah, right. literally, there's no amount of mean things you could say to me to stop me seeing my son. You fucking suck. Yeah, you he literally suck. he literally said something like after 14 years of fighting this. I was so ill and exhausted that I just had to give up and I haven't seen my son since. And it's like, wait, what? Gave up his son! <laughs> well, and, and he says, and he's like, I had to spend so much money fighting for custody. And I'm like, I bet she had to also spend the exact same amount. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You stupid asshole. Like, what the... Uh. You gave up your son! And also, the crazy your thing is... son! He's literally like 14 at this point. Yeah. Like... When I was 14 and my parents were having custody battles, the judge was like, yeah, dude, you're 14. What do you want? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, like he's like literally acts like he has no contact with his kid. It's like your kid could just call you. He, I don't think yeah. he wants to, my friend. Right. I, my guess is the kid said I would like the one that doesn't fat shame me every time I see him. Right. right? Like when I'm with mom, I don't have an eating disorder. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and look, okay, so they, they start giving us stats on how many more custodial parents are women. I know this is fucking anecdotal, but like the, the statistics agree with me on this as well. I have in my lifetime met exactly one guy who wanted custody of his kids and didn't have it. And that dude had four DUIs at the age of 31. All right. right. Like that is it. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, but it's not a fucking problem. That's the thing that's so frustrating. So they show these super misleading statistics that say like, look, significantly more custodial parents are women. It's like, yeah, because you're also ignoring a huge part of that equation, which is that many men just walk away. They yeah. just give up their rights. And they also don't show any of the statistics of single men versus single women where there was no court intervention. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Right? These are only custodial statistics. And I would venture to guess that if we were to dig deep into how many single men and single women there are with no support where the other person just walked away and they were in such a dire socioeconomic situation where they couldn't afford or they didn't bother with family court, that it's like all fucking women. Of yeah. course. That's why the court system is biased towards mothers. Yeah. And then they try to get us with this sob story. This weird guy, he has a blown up picture of a dude on his wall. Right. right? And he gestures to it and he goes, this guy killed himself because he lost custody of his kids. And look, 
That is sad. But killing yourself is great evidence that you shouldn't have been the custodial parent. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. And also, it's just like, here we go. This is just really sad. It's like a fucking sad story. And this is what monsters do, mm-hmm. is they use other people's pain to try and, like, further some sort of agenda. Like, it's really sad that this guy ended up, you know, dying by suicide because of whatever was happening in his life. But I sincerely doubt that if this guy were alive today, that he would be an MRA or that, or maybe he would, I don't know, but he could probably describe other issues that were involved. Right. Well, like everything wasn't otherwise going swimmingly with his mental health. Yeah. Obviously. Exactly. Obviously. The the other side of the drive your car into the desert and shoot yourself in the head coin is not world's greatest dad. It's just not. It's not right. on the other There's side of that There's a lot coin. in between there. And, <laughs> and that's the thing. None of the stories that she tells, they're sad, but they're so representative of an outlier. Mm-hmm. Like, none of them represent the statistical reality. Like, this movie should literally get a cherry-picking award. Oh, my God. Like, that's God. all it is, is cherry-picking data. Yeah. Yeah, well, and 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 it doesn't even, like, even when she cherry picks the data, the data doesn't add up to what she wants it to say. Look, I am sure I could go find you an example of a guilty murderer who killed himself after being convicted of murder in criminal courts. Does that mean we should stop convicting people of murder? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, this is not a cause and effect issue. Right. Also, it's like, I feel like, you know, I took debate. I could probably have made this movie better. I could have made better arguments for MRAs than she did. (laughs) It's insane. Anytime you want that boat, Kara, it's just waiting. (laughs) (laughs) Just waiting for you. (sighs) All right. So so now, Cassie, she's starting to doubt this whole women's liberation bullshit. So she went to talk to a uh, gender studies professor. And this asshole starts off by pointing out that statistically speaking, everything in this movie is is wrong. Yep. Right. He makes rational, clear, and valid arguments. And literally everything he says just falls out of her head the second she walks away. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> it's like anyone who's not already an entrenched misogynist would watch this movie and come to the opposite takeaway of the point that Cassie's trying to make. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, and I love this moment especially because he makes this point, and I think it's a really important one when we're talking about custodial parenting and blah, 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 blah. He points out the number of men who use their children as weapons against their exes after the divorce, right? right. Like m- men who didn't have any interest in parenting, who, you know, you have to fight with them to get uh, child support or anything. But then the uh, you know, the instant that they find a way to manipulate their ex-wife using the kids, they're all about it. Now they want to fight for custody. I have a, a, an ex-brother-in-law that for years and years, like, used the kids to keep my my sister from being able to, like, move to another state and take a better job and, and, and everything else. Yeah. So, like, that is a huge fucking problem. And it's almost like the family courts have to balance all of that when they're making these decisions, right? Yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. like, it's not data, but I'll say this. I know a dozen women who went through that situation, I know zero men who went through the, gee, I wish I could see my kids, but she won't let me situation. Again, I know that's not data. I know that's not statistics, but it is. it does speak to the issue that Cassie doesn't even seem to acknowledge that that situation ever exists. Uh, right, oh, and, and yeah. the statistics do back you up too, right? right. Like in your instance, <laughs> yes. And then she does this weird thing where she goes like full a beautiful mind and makes a flow chart. She, she makes a flow chart or whatever. Yeah, she's like, okay, so then I, in a very scientific way, decided to draw on the wall all of the possible scenarios that could occur with reproductive rights. And then I'm going to draw a blue line for every time the man ends out on top and a red line for every time the woman ends out on top. And it's like, whoa, that's like a really fucked up way to look at this (laughs) issue. But go on. And so as she continues, she literally says these words. I had to rewind it so I could get the perfect quote. Of every path the biological father could go down, he's at the mercy of the woman's sole discretion. Well, yeah. So, like, don't come inside her if you don't want a fucking kid. <laughs> there you go. Like, that's the only takeaway I can get from this. She literally talks about how, like, women have all the birth control options and men have none. It's like, you understand that that's because of misogyny, right? Yeah. Right. Like, because of misogyny, we have to carry the burden of 
utilizing birth control when he's the one who could just not come. Right. So men do have birth control. We also have vasectomies. You can go get a fucking vasectomy. Which is easier and like yep. less complicated and like less critical than the, the semi-permanent to permanent birth control options that women have. But like we completely ignore the fact that that's because women give fucking birth. They do, you have to give birth. And again, the opposite of this, right? The chart in the world that Cassie wants is a blue line, right? Where it says two votes to one, you have to force a woman to get an abortion, right? <laughs> right. That, that <laughs> is the scenario where men have parental choice yes. the same as women do. Or force her to not get an abortion. Exactly. Or to right. carry a kid to term, which is like is just as scary, if not scarier. Well, right. Like her, her, uh, she brings her poor ass pregnant friend into the fucking movie at this point to ask her about this shit because she's a feminist. She goes, so why do women have more reproductive rights than men? And the, and the chick's like, because we reproduce. <laughs> I, I love her feminist friend. And I, I, I just can't help but wonder like how pissed she was when yeah, she finally saw her right. pregnancy. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. It's, like, it's like when my friends who are like shark scientists end up on a Discovery docu-fiction show yeah, about right. how like, <laughs> and they're like, no, Megalodon is extinct. Like <laughs> legit, it's extinct. And then they're like, or is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking expert. Every this. time Cassie calls her, she's like, you want to get lunch? Oh, real quick. Is it for Nazis? Is it a Nazi lunch? I just want to check if it's a Nazi <laughs> lunch. <laughs> Sometimes you invite me to Nazi things. So, oh, my God. Oh, wait. No. So counterpoint here. So they, they give this. Um, they're trying to argue that men are just as often the, the victims of domestic violence. Oh, my God. That's the actual argument. And to prove that they show a clip from a daytime TV show where a bunch of women clapped for the idea of smacking your husband around. Uh, no, for tricking a man into getting you pregnant. Oh, oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. Yes, that's it was even it was. more innocuous. I, first of all, I've seen Eli make people clap for puppy torture. When you've got a group of I people have. together, it's so easy to make them clap for shit. Okay. Yep. First of all, I, I still can't. I still can't even understand the argument. How do you trick someone to, into fatherhood? Like, okay, I'm gonna punch holes in my diaphragm. Well, how about he just not come in me? There you go. Like, yep. He still has all the control because he's the one with the penis that ejects the sperm. That, like, it, it blows they me the fuck this? away. Yeah, right. That, that That's over and over again. They keep talking about this as though that were not the case. As right. though there are plenty of men who just had no idea that's where babies came from, you know? Right. Like, if you don't want a kid, don't rely on her to use the birth control. Use your own birth control. Like, your... I don't know, disgusting need to like fucking raw dog it does not trump the responsibility that yeah. you have to yourself. If you don't want a kid, don't the do it. The reproductive rights of women. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, that too. And 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 you'll notice they never make the argument about male sexual assault victims because, of course, all the courts and a tremendous amount of states do have exceptions for male victims of rape, right? So they don't bring that up because then she'd have to Google do male victims of rape have any recourse when it comes to paternity? And yes, in a vast, vast amount of cases, yes, they do. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, God. And then do you remember when they're talking about all of these examples, like these horrible examples where men are tricked into having babies or women like, you know, this vast conspiracy that women have to like, pretend that men are the fathers and they mention this situation where like a kid gets in an accident and the mom's not around so the dad has to rush him to the hospital and they go to take his blood and they realize oh, his blood type doesn't match and I'm watching it going like that's not how blood type works yeah what <laughs> he, even in his own story he can't do it right I know I'm like dude like that's not biology like plenty of dads blood type is not the same as their kid that's it's so weird because he's telling us a story that we can't fact check, right? Because it's it's like I knew a guy one time who heard about a dude one time, and even that story is demonstrably false. He's like, no, that's a true story. One, no, it's not, right? Because that's not how <laughs> biology works. But also, he's like, oh, he finds out the kid isn't his. 
okay, unless you're a fucking medieval knight trying to figure out how to dole out your land, I don't see the problem. Right. If I find out tomorrow that my son is not my biological son, that's an issue between me and my wife. My, I certainly might be frustrated with my wife, and I get it. People love their monogamy. So yeah, you can be mad at your wife. But that's still your fucking kid. And right. as a as a person with an adopted little sister, wow, is that fucking insulting? Oh yeah. yeah. To try and try and use like, can you imagine not being related to a child in your family? What godforsaken hell it must be <laughs> to have to care for some strange half breed that roams into your home. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my God. It's so insane. And and what's almost worse than this guy telling this obviously suspect story about paternity fraud is that she does literally no fact checking. Like he nope. says, no, it's true. It's true. And she's like, okay. And then they don't show any <laughs> other examples. Nope. She does no journalistic legwork whatsoever. And they just leave it at that. It's like, what is this? Yeah. And then we get to see one of the greatest infographic backfires of all time. So early in the movie, Paul Elam tried to use this analogy of saying that, like, trying to understand the men's rights movement one issue at a time would be like trying to understand a snowdrift one snowflake at a time. Right. That's the analogy he used. Um, right. And of course, he was using that to try to avoid admitting that a lot of their shit is pro rape and stuff like that. Right. Like he didn't want to talk about those individual issues. But now they go back to that. They try to do it with this graphic where it shows all these different snowflakes, each one of which represents a different part of men's rights. And, and each little branch on the snowflake has a different element of that. And they could only come up with like nine elements and 12 things or whatever. Like, I OK, first of all, their little fucking snowflakes are the Charlie Brown's Christmas tree of snowflakes. Right. They're so <laughs> emaciated. And secondly, if any of the three of us were asked to name various ways that sexism negatively affects women in this culture, the only way we wouldn't make it past 12 fucking things is if we were rendered unconscious along the way. <laughs> Guys, I didn't I didn't even notice the snowflake symbolism. It's like they literally like they picked snowflakes to talk about all of their yes. fragile ego. Like yes. it's so funny to me <laughs> that they didn't even like what the fuck? They're like, this makes me sad. I'm a man and I'm sad. All I'll right. put it on a snowflake. <laughs> I, I, I see how this metaphor could be confusing. Each of these crying babies is a men's rights activist. Yeah. <laughs> All right, never. Sorry, each of these piles of shit is a man's rights. Each pile of shit is different. Oh, uh, at one point, he literally says the words, "People don't see men as human beings," and I'm like, "Wait, wait, er? there's like a record scratch." Like, I thought people only saw men as human beings. It's like, weird that we have he that. He knows. He knows that historically, on the the fucking law books in the U.S., when a woman was raped. It was viewed as a crime against her husband. Or her yep. father, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, she or her father, whoever she was in the custody of, right? Like the custody, because, you know, she was property. <laughs> like she wasn't a person. Like men are so much more viewed as human beings than women and always have been that there was no recourse for a woman. When a woman did work, she had to give her money to her husband. Yep. Yeah. And if a woman was uh, violently abused, it wasn't a crime against her. It was a crime against her keeper, her male right, And keeper. if her keeper did it, it wasn't a crime at all. Oh, nope. yeah, for sure. And that's still the case in some states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, look, look, it's, this is so wrong that the term man is often used as a substitute for human being. <laughs> right. Yeah. What the fuck are you even? How the hell do those words even come out of your mouth? <laughs> it's so insane. I'll tell you, the real sexist was that Hamlet feller when he said, "Man delights not me." Huh? Yeah. Right. How come not woman? Yeah, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. So yeah. Okay. So then she points out that sometimes men are raped and/or the victims of domestic abuse. So we should probably stop funding anything governmental. We should stop using our tax money to help women. With that. Right. And again, this is just the crazy. This is where we introduce the honey badgers. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Right. And the honey badgers are female men's rights activists because she couldn't find any of the, you know, black people who fought for the South in the Civil War to interview. Right. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. She's going to go with these ladies instead. Oh, God. One guy at one point says, I 
I shit you not. He makes the argument. He's telling he's telling us about how abusive his wife was. And he says he went to the cops to tell them about it. And they didn't take it seriously. And that, by the way, is a very real problem. Again, a problem with toxic masculinity. Feminists will fight for you on this. Yeah. But then he says that the cops told him that if his wife broke a fingernail hitting him, they would arrest him for breaking her fingernail. Mm. That sure happened. I'm sure that's a real story of a thing that happened in the universe, man. Good, good. Glad it got included. And also, like, like. Again, see my previous statistics. While it is true and while it is horrible that men are raped, while it is true and that it is horrible that men are victims of domestic violence, once again, <clears throat> one in five women have been raped in their lifetimes. Compare that to one in 71 men. Yep. And also, almost half, 47% of all female victims of homicide in 2012, which was the year that they pulled these statistics, were killed by their intimate partners or family members. Okay, wow. almost half. Compare that to fewer than 6% of male homicide victims. So again, what's the takeaway here? Men kill men. Right. right. Men also kill women. Also, and this is the myth that they're going to dwell on for the rest of the movie. This is where they bring up things like the CDC study and they start talking about the numbers being equal. And to be clear, this is confusing, but it is a lie. What they're talking about is old studies that counted reciprocal violence as mutual, right? right. So that yes. means that if you start beating up your girlfriend and she hits you back, the CDC study that they'll quote several times throughout the rest of the movie counted it as like, Yep, both men and women get hit. But every time they talk about who starts the hitting, the numbers go exactly where we think they go. Right. And they stay there. And that's why the people who made this movie will never talk about them. They will simply quote yep. old studies about reciprocal violence because it's just it's the easiest way to manipulate that data. But it's a fucking lie. Right. So so at this point, they start talking. OK, first of all, they quote a honey badger who says <laughs> there are endless studies showing that women are just as violent as men. Uh, no, they yeah, no, Q there zero are. studies. Yeah, yeah. Yep. she she doesn't look anything up. She doesn't like show any headlines. She just just take my word for it. And then they go into this idea of why there aren't shelters for men. They're like, oh, of all the shelters where you can seek refuge from a violent partner, they all cater to women. Why is that? I think this is reverse discrimination against yeah, men. Even, like, this is some Trump-level doublespeak. This is insanity. Oh, my God. Yeah, those shelters are funded with man taxes. Why? How? <laughs> and, and look, okay, again, yes, there are men who are victims of, of domestic abuse. Women are way more likely to be financially dependent on their abuser, which is one of the main reasons why we have to have those shelters. But the key here, and, and, and one of the feminists in the movie actually makes this point, is no one's stopping your ass from making a fucking shelter from abu for abused men. Yes. Right? If that was really your fucking problem, that's what you'd be doing. Right, but that's not what they say. They keep fucking up what a zero-sum game is. Yep. And they keep saying that, like, like, she has, oh my God, she has no critical thinking stills. They keep saying that, like, Okay, so this is a horrible, horrible problem for women, and it's a teeny tiny problem for men. So we need to take some of the women's help away in yeah. order to help the men. It's like, no, just help men too. Well, and that's the thing. They can't help but give away the game, right? You're this right. is a non-issue <laughs> if they say, which is why we're advocating for more men's shelters. And I'm all about that shit, but they are not advocating for more men's shelters. They are advocating for less women's shelters. <laughs> well, it, even worse, they're advocating for letting men into those shelters. Which is yeah. so scary and dangerous. Yes. Can you imagine? Oh my God. Oh. And also then they start again equating suicide rates among men with violence against women. And they literally say, because so many more women are abused than men, right? And so many more women end up in women's shelters. And so they're comparing the number of women's shelters to the number of men's shelters. And they say, like, even though it's the vast majority, it's still discriminatory because men aren't allowed to go to women's shelters. And then as somehow she thinks, like, furthering her argument, she says, wouldn't you call it discriminatory if we only let men call suicide hotlines since the vast majority of men die by suicide. It's like, yes, I would call it discriminatory. And that's because women aren't forcing men to take their lives. Right. Nope. Like women are being forced to enter shelters by violent men lest they die by their hands. Like 
that's you can't equate those two things. No. Also, if we if we want to play the shelter numbers game, why don't you compare the number of women's shelters and dog shelters? Because then it turns out that society is run by puppies. Did you know that? It's run by puppies. It's like 10 animal shelters for every woman's shelter in this country. OMG. Turns out that rescue cats are the fucking Jew lizards that run it all. <laughs> all right, now that surprises me 0%, actually. I, I have four yeah. cats. That would not surprise me a lick. All right, well, I'll tell you what. There is only so long I can go with the anti-shelters for abused women arguments before I need a break. <laughs> so we're going to pause there, but first let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will Cassie ever remember that she found these people in the first place by Googling rape apologists? <laughs> <laughs> Why would we talk about anything else at any point? Who gives a fuck if they cleaned up graffiti earlier that day? <laughs> Find out the answers to what's your perfect Sunday type shit instead of those questions when we return for the shocking in all the worst ways conclusion of The Red Pill. Hi, I'm Kara Santa Maria. I used to be a science educator and advocate, but then I decided... I sure would like a boat. And in order to get that boat, I found myself among the world of wealth rights activists. <laughs> so far on my journey, my mind has been blown by arguments like, nah, -uh, you are, and well, actually. But I had to continue my journey, so I decided to speak to economics professor and person who holds the opinion of literally every expert in the subject, Tim Hutchins. So tell me, Tim, are rich people actually the oppressed ones? Nope. Nope. That's uh, it's not what oppression means. And even if it was, by definition, having more opportunity and resources is easier. And nobody's saying that bad things don't happen to wealthy people. But the goal of wealth equality isn't to punish the wealthy. Hmm. But, but what about yacht accidents, uh, private planes, or that one time someone was mean to my friends? Right. So the first two are questions of access. And that last one is an anecdote, which, while potentially sad, is neither data nor how we should make decisions about society. Hmm. OK, I'm thinking a two seater, something fast you can take out on a lake. What? Oh, oh sorry. I was thinking about the boat I'm going to buy. Oh, OK, so please don't do this. Right. There, there has to be a way to make money that isn't such a monstrously incorrect stance on such an obvious question. Oh, sorry, I wasn't listening. Um, join oh. me next week when I'll be a transphobe just before you can't get away with it anymore. Oh, you're a terrible person. What? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for yet more of this shit. We're going to open up this time meeting a British MRA lady because, you know, it sounds smarter coming in out of a British accent named Erin Pizzy, I guess. Oh, Aaron Pinsey. So little background on Aaron, by the way, because she is largely the person who created the myth of the reciprocal violence. So the reason why she was originally canceled by feminists, and, and it's weird she doesn't mention that, is she uh, accused the feminist group she was a member of of planning a bombing? <laughs> what? what? Yep. She turned in a bunch of her fellow feminists because she said they were planning a bombing and there is a lot of questions about whether they were, in fact, planning a bombing in the early hmm. 60s. And then, wouldn't you know it, after she accused all the people she worked with of trying to bomb men because they were radical feminists, she realized that women hit men just as much as men hit women. Well, Crazy. Uh, it's, it's even worse than that, Eli. She realized that, and I quote, most domestic abuse is consensual. <laughs> right. Like, she, she doesn't even understand or maybe she just misspeaks but the difference between consensual and reciprocal that's a pretty big difference yeah <laughs> i know like she's literally saying most women are in on it they're like yeah hit me bitch right. <laughs> like, yeah. what the fuck oh my fucking god she's and, and and like of course cassie has to be like well so okay so the, this woman she was a feminist and, and a well-known one it, the movie says and i didn't check on this that she opened up the very first shelter for abused women in London? She did. She did. Okay. Yeah. And then so Cassie says, well, what made all of the feminists hate you? She says, ah, demonstrable lie. I, I said that women were as violent <laughs> as men. And what's, what's amazing, though, is, is as you're saying, Eli, is that she was leaving off the actual worst part of it. But even the thing that she did say to avoid saying that was terrible. Well, and, and not just that, right? Because they will show 
tapes that she took, right? She takes these tapes of the women in the shelter. That was part of her exit strategy is that she filmed women in a women's shelter. By the way, terrible fucking idea if you've ever worked in or around a women's shelter mm -hmm. to film the women and children inside it. But she filmed them as like, backup just in case you know she fell out of popular when she accused the people that she worked with of planting a bomb oh my god it's so gross like so she's mm. got these videos these like home videos of women talking about violence and and the perpetuation of generational violence right and they're saying like i was beat up and yeah sometimes i feel violent and yeah sometimes i you know shake my kid or i hit my kid or whatever and she she makes this point that you know, women who are abused as children may be more likely as they become older to abuse their own children. And it's like, yeah, that happens. And it's horrible. But what does that have to do with men? Right. Like men also abuse children and grow up to become abusers. Like this has nothing to do with gender and it has everything to do with breaking cycles of violence. But every single one of these MRA arguments is like, but, 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 but women... Yeah, right. yeah, no, it's 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 too coquet, but incorrectly. Like, like it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a fallacious argument, but also a lie. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's all the things. It's like just the whole chart of the informal logical fallacy. Yeah. <laughs> right. You can just yeah, like right. check exactly. them all Take off. Take your pick. Just pull one out of my hat. Yeah. So it, yeah. So it's, it, it, she's like, you know, I I learned that women were. Just as violent as men, but feminists, you know, they had a different uh, take, you know, <laughs> reality. Yeah, their hot take is that they were being fucking abused. <laughs> a bunch of bullshit. Oh, my God. And now, like we mentioned earlier, Kimmel, Michael Kimmel, is just going to absolutely destroy the last third of the movie. Right. He just drops knowledge bombs left and right. And she just like has a vacant look in her eyes yeah. while he talks to her. I wrote Kimmel is making awesome points while Cassie J sings a song to herself in her fucking head. Because <laughs> <laughs> as Noah pointed out, what he says almost word for word is even if their numbers were true and they are not wouldn't they want there to be more shelters, not less shelters? Wouldn't they want less abuse rather than apologizing for abuse and advocating for abuse against women? And the camera hovers for a second as Cassie's poor cameraman is like, C Cassie, do we do we still have a movie? I feel like we don't have a movie anymore. <laughs> right. I wrote in my notes, but Cassie's just not so sure about <laughs> dot, dot, dot something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. So then the British lady comes back and she explains that the problem is, is that feminists decided instead of hating capitalists, they had to hate patriarchy because you know how those are mutually exclusive. Yeah. It's like, nope. Capitalism is still pretty awful. And also like, who are all the capitalists? Right, yeah. <laughs> right, like who who sits in the boardroom? Who makes these decisions at these like Fortune 500 multinational corporations? Well, okay, at, at a certain point, Aaron Pizzi starts blaming all of this on big abuse. <laughs> big yeah, abuse! They, they keep using the word industry. Yes, the like abuse they're talking industry! Non-profits that are trying to b literally rescue women and bring them mental health services and find them safe housing. They call it like some big industry. <laughs> if I know one thing, it's that women's shelters have too much money. <laughs> I mean, from the ones, oh, it's just rolling in it. And now, because this movie has reached the height of insanity, they're going to take on a therapeutic tool, the Duluth Power and Control oh, yes. Wheel. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, for me, and Kara, I can only imagine what this was like for you because you're in training to be a counselor. Yeah, no, yeah, a clinical psychologist. This, this was the most surreal moment in the movie. Yeah. Because it would be like someone being like, fucking chairs. Ch I'm sorry, it's a square, but it's missing a side. I can't sit on a square without a side. It's, I, it's, it's <laughs> bizarre. Well, what, it really, what it really feels like to me, and it's something that I've been kind of like entrenched in online lately, is all of the people... So I, I, I retweeted or quote tweeted some news articles about Trump's push for basically like a fucking Hitler youth re-education campaign in yeah. America, uh -huh. right? Like he wants to 
take the 1619 project out of curriculum or pull funding from places that have that. And he wants to promote, quote, patriotic education, which really he means nationalistic education. And mm-hmm. and whenever I'm like, you guys, this is legit scary. I can't tell you how many hordes of trolls are like, yeah, like critical race theory isn't. And that's how I felt when I was watching this. Like it's the same as all the white nationalists out there basically blaming. This is the the greatest scam that conservatives have perpetrated is like blaming critical race theory for all of the evils in society. And I feel like that's exactly what they're doing with the power and control wheel. They're saying that it in and of itself is inherently sexist when all it's doing is trying to help women understand how they've been oppressed. Right. Well, yeah. Exactly. It's, it's a tool <laughs> for abuse victims, by the way. It doesn't mention gender. That's just something that people ascribe to it. Right. Uh, interesting that the that the men in this movie, the men's rights activists, were like they use the wheel on men. Doesn't mention gender, but it's just something for abuse victims to recognize that they have been abused. Well, and, and the right. extent yeah. of the abuse, and sense yeah. Of it. Mm-hmm. yeah. And the counter that this gentleman has is that if you are an abuser, if you're a convicted abuser. And you are asked to examine your own behavior through the Duluth power and control wheel. There is not an option on this therapeutic tool to go, nuh-uh, I did not. And then fucking leave. That's his problem. Yes. Right. He says, like, by this standard, men who have hit their wives have to admit that she didn't have it coming, even if they think she did. (laughs) That's so insane. That's his fucking argument. Oh, Oh. my God. And also, he's so condescending while he's making it. I don't know if you guys remember just his disgusting tone of voice. And, like, he he just kept calling it the domestic violence industry. It's like when people talk about big climate research, like, (laughs) all the funding all the climate researchers (laughs) are getting. And they just, like, blatantly ignore the fossil fuel industry. There is one that has a lot of money, though, isn't there? (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, so now Cassie is very overwhelmed. She can't be bothered to make a documentary, so she just talks directly at the camera some more. And and she's like, you know, I can't help but feel like the truth is somewhere in between all these bullshit things the MRA people are saying to me and all the straw men they've created of feminism. Like, yeah, it's Ugh. probably feminism right there in the fucking middle. Yeah, right. She, she even has this insane thing where she goes, you know, I think about it. I made videos about having to do all the housework and not wanting to get raped. But really, that was just whining now that I think about it, all that not wanting to get raped I talked about. Ooh, yeah. Right, she literally says, maybe those videos were just really trivial. Trivial! <laughs> she calls it trivial. And quote, and I quote, I don't know what I believe and who is wrong and who is right. Like this girl is textbook vulnerable for a cult leader. Yeah, like she's right. like yeah. the exact right person yep. who's just going to believe the last thing she heard. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. So she, yeah, she explains how her problems with the patriarchy were trivial compared to that guy who shot himself over the custody battle. And then to like emphasize their point, they play this video. I believe it was, it was it Rosanna Arquette or it was, it was somebody at the Oscars doing a speech about how they need better female representation and films and how women are, are still often held down in Hollywood. And the movie presents it like this. Psh, can you believe these bitches kind of thing? Because this was released a year before me Too hit Hollywood. Yep. Right. Right. So like in light of what we know now, this is the most understated, reasonable thing she possibly could have fucking said. Yeah, she's like, we need our civil rights movement because we are oppressed. Yeah, and then like w- like less than a year later, it comes out that virtually every woman in Hollywood has been being sexually harassed by the same guy out in public for the last 20 fucking years and nobody did anything about it. Hell yes, they do. Yeah, yeah, right. She's sitting three seats down from Harvey Weinstein while she's like, man, I wish people would acknowledge what we're going through. And he's like, clap, clap, clap. That's great. Clap, clap. And yeah. He's like clapping with one hand while his other one's like down his fucking <laughs> pants. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> All right. So, so now she's going to talk to another female MRA. <laughs> this one is actually a Karen. <laughs> yep. Actually a Karen because we've reach the bottom of satire and it's okay (laughs) because Karen is going to tell us about how Boko Haram was really an attack against men. It was those feminists at Boko Haram. This is the craziest part of the movie. (laughs) 
I mean, there's so many crazy parts of this movie. So I don't know if saying this is the craziest part is actually valid, but she <laughs> literally shits on the fact that the media covered so intensely the girls that were kidnapped. So she shits on the, compa- the campaign to try and bring our girls home. And she does it again by pointing out that Boko Haram also kills men. And so then she says, basically, that that makes Boko Haram chivalrous. Sh- exact word. Th- that's her chivalrous. word, yes. Chivalrous. Like, like sh- she understands that all of this senseless death is not because Boko Haram hates men, right? Like, <laughs> I think she's literally making the argument that Boko Haram hates men so much that they're slaughtering thousands of people. It's like, no, they're a terrorist organization. They're a terrorist organization. <laughs> like, right, yeah. It has nothing to do with gender. <laughs> And her example of their chivalry, and this is his exact quote, is while the men were killed, the girls were, quote, sold into slavery with hope of escape. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, yeah. My though, God. So that's so much fucking better. And she, OK, so she show it. So she's either saying that Boko Haram is, you know, anti men, feminist sexism, or at the very least, she's saying that the media is because hundreds and hundreds of men died and the media barely covered it. Which she proves by showing us a ton of headlines. Oh my, so many headlines. Of the media covering like, exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, again, nobody in this movie understands what a zero-sum game is. Like, they right. literally right. think that because Boko Haram kills men, that means that fewer women are being killed, which means that Boko Haram... <laughs> hates men and loves women. Like, it's like, what? what? What Can't can't be the takeaway of this. First of all, it's like the longest segment in the movie. It's like really intense. Yeah. Because it's just a deluge of like really sad music and like horrific images and horrible headlines just basically showing how many people have died by the hands of this terrorist organization. Like, it has nothing to do with the premise. Nope. And they're just going on and on about how people have been murdered at the hands of Boko Haram. And somehow their takeaway is that this is a chivalrous organization. Yeah, I I wrote in my notes, I'm like, yeah, way to go, Cassie. The pro-Boko Haram portion of your feminist audience just threw in the towel. (laughs) Right, you really got him. What the Adam. Oh, I have to point out this line from Karen. She's talking about the kidnap girls thing at one point. And she says, you know, that in such and such a terrorist attack, Boko Haram killed 100 men and one woman. And yet when they were described in the news reports, it said they killed 101 people. She actually makes air quotes around people like because it was almost all men. They weren't people. But <laughs> what the fuck was the point? Right, because they pointed out that a bunch of girls had been stolen, but they didn't point out that a bunch of men had been murdered. But and that's also, also not one true. Woman. <laughs> yeah. But it's like headline after headline, they show to make her point. She says, like, they don't ever point out when it's just boys. And then she shows a bunch of headlines and does pull quotes from the articles where it says 100 boys were murdered, yeah. 50 boys were murdered. They never point out the fact that this is because schools are not mixed. Right. And so if right. the school is taken down and it's a boy school, only boys are there and only boys die. If girls are kidnapped from a school, it's because it's a girl's school. Right. And there are only girls there. But, you know, whatever. That's besides the point. She's literally bitching about the fact that the media doesn't care that they killed boys. And then to show evidence, there are articles where the media is actively caring about boys dying. Yeah. Right. 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 Ugh. Well, but but so so then we, we cut we turn to Tom Golden, who explains the exact opposite. Right. About how the media doesn't care about men. And, and then he says something about how, like, the only time you ever hear uh, people talking about men's rights issues is when they're talking against it. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wait, like, what does that tell you about your opinion, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also get some more the protesters were mean thing. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, Janice Fiamengo. She is a self-proclaimed proud boy. And she tweeted. This is one of my favorite Google discoveries. This is one of her tweets. Technology is inherently masculine. I know. I can feel it. Every time I flip a light switch, I get a little weak in the knees. And I whisper to myself, thank you, men. Wait, what? What? (laughs) (laughs) That's a real tweet of hers. (laughs) What? (laughs) She also appeared 
<laughs> on a neo-Nazi podcast to say that white men are living under feminist Sharia law. But oh, I like the tweet about uh, yeah. how she gets wet about the fucking light switches. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they're, so they're giving us more examples of how men's rights activists aren't even allowed to talk without the feminists coming and shutting them down. So we say, we see some feminists, like they're at some rally or whatever, and a group of protesters pulled the, I'm sorry, illegally pulled the fire alarm to end it. You're not allowed. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so they, they cut out to the street, right? Because everybody was forced outside. And we get this moment where they're trying to find some shrill, bitchy feminist to film. Right, yeah. yeah. Except... They can't let anyone talk for 18 seconds or more on the other side without them pointing out the Achilles heel to this entire fucking movie's premise, right? Because this woman immediately points out that the couple of good points that they actually care about are things that feminists, A, agree with them on, and B, more importantly, fight for more effectively than they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, their entire counter argument is your voice is annoying. Feminists suck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and by the way, this woman is called Big Red, and this started a violent and dangerous harassment campaign against her because this movie was made by MRAs for MRAs. This woman literally had to go into hiding because of the Jesus death threats that she got. Christ. And it was because of this clip. Which is, I had never seen this clip. I just knew that because of this movie, she had gotten harassed. And Wait, like, you had never seen that clip? I had never seen this clip before. So I just knew I'm pretty sure that Richard Dawkins retweeted this clip. No, he tweeted a cartoon making fun of her. Right, right, and, right. And Islamists, right. Yeah, and got a lot, like, again, facilitated this, like, horrible campaign against her. Oh, it was wow. terrible. Right. Yeah. She is, yeah, she's been the victim of a lot of, of hate and harassment. But now that I actually see the clip, she's just like, I'm on your side. And and the thing that people talk about all the time is her saying, shut the fuck up. But yeah. the guy she's talking to won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. He needed to shut the fuck up. I'm not going to name names, but I've seen people on this podcast tell people to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? But it's, it's so funny to me because, again, they, they're trying to argue that sexism isn't a real problem or whatever. I have a good friend who is an atheist activist who's a woman, and her and I talk out online all the time about how she's got sort of the, like, you know, angry atheist attitude and shit. She's like, I can, I could never get away with what you get away with, right? Because then I become shrill bitch. Right. When you right. do it, all the atheists are like, yeah, you tell them, Noah, as soon as a woman does it, it's like, you need to calm down and be nicer. Try smiling more, you know? Ugh, yeah. I fucking hate it. I mean, it's the case across the board. We know that this is the case when we have any, you know, if we're in a position at all of any authority, like in the workplace, in anything, if we're firm, if we mm -hmm. are, we just can't ever get it right. We're either too giggly or too permissive. But then if we have to like put our foot down, then all of a sudden we are like, yeah, either a shrill bitch or like a cunt or whatever. And yep. nobody likes you and you're not nice enough. It's fucking insane. Like the, the standards are such that we can't win. And the sad thing about Big Red specifically is that, okay, whether or not you think her voice is annoying, that has nothing to do with the words she's saying. Well, and the words she's saying are so fucking good. Look, I, yeah. I got to give her a ton of fucking credit, because especially because she says later that she's only been involved in feminism for a few years. So she was really kind of, yeah, that's almost like, you know, like you could have talked to somebody who's an expert in the subject if you wanted to get, you know, the best possible answers. You were trying to get somebody that like, you know, your audience could be angry with. And she does right. a very good job. At one point, she says, and I thought this was such a good fucking uh, thing, because one of the MRIs say like, well, we're working on that. We're working on that. She says, no, you're not working on anything because you're not creating any change in the world. Right. right. To the fucking bone, asshole. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. You can't be working on anything if you're not changing shit. Yeah, and he might change shit or work on shit if he would shut the fuck up. <laughs> yes. Dude, just listen. It's such a reasonable <sighs> ask for him to shut the... I'm sorry, my mind is blown because I hadn't seen this clip and I, I just, I feel crazy. Yeah, I feel that's like I'm the so thing that everyone... <laughs> All right, so, so then Cassie asks the $64,000 question, right? She says... Look, why should there be any conflict between MRAs and feminists at all if you guys are really about all the lukewarm bullshit this documentary has mentioned so far? Right. It doesn't even logically follow to which all the MRAs have to say, well, feminists think men are demons. All men are terrible, horrible <laughs> people. 
<laughs> Despite the fact that most of the feminists we've heard from in this fucking documentary are men. Yes, yeah. you're right. <laughs> she said they, they have they seem to have no fucking problem with Eli or myself. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Isn't that <laughs> weird? And at one point, the counter argument is literally this. Pointing out that the oppressor oppresses, demonizes the oppressor. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! He literally says, like, pointing out that men are violent towards women and, like, have most of the power and control is very demonizing to men. Yeah. Okay. Which, uh, okay, yeah. yeah. And, and, and then right after that, the, mother, the same motherfucker says, to say someone is privileged is to say that they don't matter. No, it isn't. Yeah, that's not what it says at all. No, nope. <laughs> like pointing out privilege does not mean you don't matter. He is basically making the all lives matter argument. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> what an idiot! So we've seen Big Red now. We saw her, you know, like arguing with somebody on the street. So now we sit down for an interview with her, and the first question Cassie gives her, she's like, you know, some people say feminists don't fight for the rights of men. I'm like, the fucking NAACP doesn't fight for the rights of whites. So you know, like, why, why <laughs> yeah. would they, like? Be, because they don't need to. Right. Right. Because that's the norm. Yeah. And, and and again, Big Red points out that the problems she's talking about are problems with toxic masculinity and patriarchy that affect men. Yeah. Right. Right. That we're all victims of this like horrible culture. Yeah. But of course, all of the MRAs have to make this argument that radical feminism is based on hate. And again, because because like <laughs> when people attack sexism in general they're attacking these men personally right right it's like when people are more offended by being called a racist than actually the racist shit that they do all the yes, time exactly it's so annoying right oh speaking of annoying i know this is so minor compared to all the toxic shit in this movie but she, there's one point where she's interviewing that karen lady they're in a bar and like some birthday party group starts yes! shouting loudly so instead of going and finding a reasonable place to do the interview she just throws up subtitles good for yeah. you cassie no second takes no <laughs> fucking second takes <laughs> you're wearing that kickstarter money to the bitter end oh, oh god so yeah, so somebody I, I don't even remember at this point, they all kind of look the same to me. But one of <laughs> one of the MRAs says something about how back in the seventies when the feminists rewrote all the laws, they didn't do it and they didn't help men with that. Like, really? They, we should Oh my god, this part made me so <laughs> mad. Okay, so let's just like he literally says women have written laws that discriminate against men as he that's he's like when all the laws that were written that discriminate against men and i'm like wait wait i need to do some research here <laughs> which women was it maybe the 57 of all time that have served in the senate Jesus. compared to 1927 men who have served in the senate was yeah it, they got a lot done those 57, 57 women, women? aoc's like, doing a Christ. ton she's just really writing what the fuck wow yeah well they, so yeah and he goes like i'm not saying all feminists are like this just the bosses and mini bosses <laughs> speaking of which they show this clip of hillary clinton right where somebody asks yeah. hillary do you think women should have to register for the draft and hillary she doesn't say no i want to kill men she's like you know that's an interesting question i'll have to think about that I hadn't really given that a lot of thought because you know that's not a subject that we talk about ever right <laughs> fucking yeah. got her Right, yes, right. And the movie's like, what a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're wrapping up. Everybody's making their closing arguments. One guy basically says, hey, look, if women get a movement, we should get a movement too, damn it. Just like whites need a movement to counteract black lives. Oh, I'm a bad guy. I heard Sorry. it. I yeah. heard it that time. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus. Cassie says, I'm finding sources after source to support what the MRAs are saying. I don't want to share them with you, though, because that would <laughs> you would. It's more fun if you have to find them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this her weird summary of the movie at this point cites like no evidence. Nope. All she does is regurgitate talking points with no counter arguments, by the way. No, nope. <laughs> like she's just like, oh, here's what all of these uh, sexist men have to say. And I'm really starting to believe them. It's the weirdest thing. It's like 
she's only agreeing with all the shit they're saying because she's only asking them innocuous questions yeah. and they're giving milk toast answers. Like she's doing no journalism. And if she were to actually do a little bit of work and uncover all the horrific shit they've done and said and just ask them about them, she wouldn't have a movie. Right, no. like she could have just you know, like used their own headlines that came in question form, right? Like she could have asked, like, "Hey, when is it okay to hit your wife?" Yep. Yeah, right. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Noah, because you might remember earlier in the movie about Paul Elam, the one who we've sympathetically shown over and over again, coming up with "Bash a Violent Bitch Month." Well, it turns out it was in response to an article on Jezebel.com. Right. No. Yeah. If you think about it, the, the fact that the media didn't really dig into the nuances of his story <laughs> titled Bash a Bitch Month, that's a sign of how sexist they really are. Right. Right. Because it was a response. It's totally legitimate. Jeez. I didn't think about it that way. And here's the craziest part. That Jezebel article is, hey, women hit men. Don't do that. Yes. It's a not yes! hitting article. <laughs> right. It was a fucking. Yeah. So it, uh, they, look. Here's all you really need to know about this movie. In its closing defense, as its gotcha moment, they get somebody from the Southern Poverty Law Center on the phone to admit that they're not technically listed as a hate group. <laughs> 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 oh, really? I think I've made my case. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're literally like, okay, well, as a movement, it's complicated, but basically every website they own is a hate group. Yeah, right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Men's rights in, in, in general aren't a hate group. They have a lot. Of, okay, that's all I need. That's all I need. Bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, and then, okay, so we, we close up on Cassie's like, I've learned something here today moment uh, where she <laughs> first of all spends an inordinate amount of time explaining the difference between the people's front of Judea, and the Judean people's front. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you got to give it. It's like us giving shout outs to the patron. She's got the MGTOWs <laughs> and the incels <laughs> and the red pills. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh yeah no i want to push back on her all of the perspectives are worth listening to bullshit no they're not hunt they're not no. they're absolutely not and the truth is the more i listen to all of these perspectives i just feel more feminist now i just i'm just more angry i literally feel dumber i have no sympathy for cassie anymore and i i have to admit you guys I hate you a little bit more for making me watch this movie. Yeah, that's fair. I that hate us a fair. little bit more too, Gary. It's okay. Allison's choice and this movie, you have legitimate legal strength against us at this I point. I do. I Some really kind of do. Yeah, it's probably on thing. that Duluth wheel somewhere, actually, now that you mention it. Yeah. God awful movies is right between quadrants. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, but but the but the takeaway is that Cassie's not a feminist anymore, y'all. We saved one. Dun dun. Done. And we made it through. And while that's going to do it for the review of Red Pill, <laughs> that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need a sex sexagen to do some tuple down on this. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. A student keeps a journal while one world government takes over the world. Years later, a soldier finds her journal and questions everything he believes. <gasps> Rumors. Of wars. Oh, another one world government. Great. Great. Awesome. <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 266 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara Santa Maria for hanging out with us this week. Hear more from her on Talk Nerdy. You'll find that linked on the show notes. And then at least as huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, d d Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotny of People Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. A honey badger Karen later left the men's rights movement after accusing another honey badger of trying to turn her against Paul Elam by showing her pictures of her boobs. So weird and real. Uh, <laughs> Paul Elam's eyeballs eventually did escape. 
they live happily together now in an undisclosed location in Mexico. Cassie J gave a TED talk about how mean everyone was to her about her movie, and then recommended Mike Cernovich's movie Hoaxed on Twitter. Oh, Jesus fuck. Oh, God. <laughs> Eli, what is Bananganango no no no? All right, I'll let you do that cue. That's what Morgan, that's what Eli's going with. He spelled it Bananang Nang Nana Nu Nu. So Morgan gets it. All right. And action. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2020, all rights reserved.